Hey, I'm Randy. I'm the Chief Audio Man. Today we're talking about the Cambridge SSX60. But let's talk about our sponsor first, Smith's Free Range Pomeranians. We don't use antibiotics. Smith's, always free range, no antibiotics for the healthiest Pomeran Pomeranians available. Okay. Okay, stop. Go away. Go away. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Cambridge Cambridge SSSX60. You know the free range free range are just better. They're just better. Alright. Cambridge. SX sixty. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't think that audio equipment should cost more than replacing your roof. So, and the Cambridge doesn't. These speakers are two ninety nine, three hundred dollars. Six and a half inch woofer, one inch soft dome tweeter. Hold on. Oh yeah, two ninety nine on Amazon. Cambridge probably heard of them. They've been making high quality audio equipment for a long time. How do they look? Well, let's move the coffee. Put it over here. They look pretty good. When I saw the picture on the Amazon, uh, they just look black, but they're actually kind of like a dark brown, nice fake wood, nice fake grain. Um, the woofer is my favorite. Why? It looks like a record. It's all black and has circular etchings in it. It's cool looking. I, I'm, I'm being completely serious. I think it does look cool. It's got like a rubber surround and then uh, the tweeter looks like it, it has a rubber waveguide. Which is a thing because the uh, Triangle Bro Bor Borea Bro 3s also have something similar. There's another speaker that had kind of like a round surround wave guy anyway these are an amazon there's also a five inch available which i'd like to get it is the sx50 maybe i'll get those they're rated at 41 hertz i think low 40s 41 i'm gonna say 41 up to 22,000 hertz or 22 kilohertz doesn't matter it's the same 89 dB at 8 ohms. Actually pretty easy to drive. Not the easiest, but not the hardest. Right in the middle. In the middle. Good thing is you can drive them from just about anything. 35 watt Cambridge integrated amp. I got you covered. So I like the looks. Um, they are front ported. Um, they have kind of a similar look to the ELAC debut B6.2s. Do they sound the same? No, they don't. They don't sound the same, but we're gonna get into that more on Saturday in the Saturday speaker shootout. Best speaker in a $300, six and a half inch version. That's pretty good. So you can support this channel by using my links. I get a small commission uh, by trying out Amazon HD for free. There'll be a link in the description. Click on it, scroll down to the bottom, click try HD. You get three months for free and I get a dollar. Or you can be a Patreon. And we've got some, and I'm gonna tell you them. A lot of people put it up on, on the video, so I'm gonna do that too. Thank you, Patreons. I'm just kidding, I'm gonna read them off. No last names so. though. We're gonna keep anonymity. Uh, Christopher G. Gert P, I love that name, Gert. Uh, Christopher P, not to be confused with Christopher G. Jeff S, Paul G. Dr. C from New Orleans, you know who you are. Grun Funner. Grun Funner. Kevin G, Joseph K, Paul K, Hector O, Michael M, Dale D, and Naveen. Naveen was my first ever Patreon. Thank you, Naveen. I appreciate it. So let's talk about 
stuff that's important, like how it sounds. Soundstage and imaging. Soundstage is how wide and how high the music feels overall. It's okay. I've heard better and I've heard worse. It's, it's, it's okay. Metallica. Um, it's not sad but true. Wherever I may roam. The beginning, the song comes in and travels over to the other speaker. Wow. And then uh, about 20 seconds in, there's some little drums off to the right-hand side. While I did the drums off to the right side very well, the imaging, and you can tell good imaging, because you'll feel like when sound travels from one speaker to the other, it feels seamless. While the sound staging to the right was, was good, the travel from speaker to speaker was not as good. I could tell it was coming out from the right speaker, your left, to the left speaker, your right, um, just kind of chopped up. Kind of traveled a little bit, then nothing, and then it picked up again. Center imaging, not fantastic, but it's okay. I've heard better center imaging, um, and I've heard, well, I don't know if I've ever heard worse center imaging. Yes, I have. On the Polk S15s, that center image was worse. These are better. It's not going to be like locked in, but it's fine. It's good. It's not horrible. Uh, More Human Than Human by White Zombie. At the beginning of the song, there's a bunch of little electronic noises, and they travel back and forth in the speakers. Good imaging speaker. You can feel like you can see, not see, but hear where it's coming from as it pops uh, back and forth. Not really. Didn't really happen on these. Didn't really happen. It's fine. It's fine. Imaging and soundstage, there's better options out there. Okay? It doesn't mean it's horrible. It just means there's better options. Let's talk about bass. All right, so bass is where this speaker probably has the, I don't know, it's the best. If, like, there's one standout to the speaker, it's the bass. Uh, obviously, spec at 41 hertz, that means it goes pretty low. That doesn't always mean it's going to sound good. It just means that it goes low. Um, but this goes low, and it sounds pretty good. Uh, the bass is very present, especially for a front-ported speaker that's not shoved all the way up against the wall. Uh, the bass is very there, even with the speaker being a foot and a half out from the wall. Okay? If you put it closer to the wall, it's going to get more pronounced because of room gain. That could not be quite a good thing with this speaker unless you just love that bass. Because it does well pulled out from the wall. It does well already. It might be too much of a good thing if you shove it really close to the wall. So if you can only have your speaker like six, six inches from the wall, there's better options than this. If you can have your speaker 12 to 18 or more inches, it's good. It's got good bass presence, which also means at lower volumes, you don't feel like you're missing that. These speakers can stand alone without a subwoofer, for sure. The only other speaker I've seen that's spec lower than these in a bookshelf is a Polk S20. That's spec down to 39. And they sound similar in the bass. Bass presence on both those speakers sounds similar. Um, nice thickness to, um, well, bass. Um, good punch uh, on kick drums, as people like to call them. It's just a drum on a drum kit using your foot to make a sound. I don't like kick drums. I think that's silly. But anyway, bass is very good. Very good. Thick. Nice. Present. Probably the best thing about these speakers. It's their bass. Let's talk about mid-range. Okay, so bear with me on this and don't jump to any conclusions. Uh, mid-range is not the clearest I've ever heard. Okay? It doesn't mean they're bad. Quite frankly, I, I do an evaluation of the speakers, and that's in direct comparison to other speakers that I know pretty well. 
and then it either does as good as those speakers or it doesn't do as good as those speakers. And then that's how what I base my opinion on. Then when I'm done with all that, I just listen to them and I do my work. I do whatever I'm doing just with them on in the background. Okay. Mid range on these is not as detailed as some other speakers on shoot to thrill by ACDC. The initial guitar should come in on the right, unless you have your speakers hooked up backwards or the RCAs flipped around should come in on the right. And while it's stepped back and not as loud as the rest of the song, it still should be clear. Um, it was slightly veiled on these speakers. And I'm starting to kind of figure out that that song with that guitar bridges the top of the woofer to the bottom of the tweeter as far as where that speaker is crossed over. Okay? So I think with a lower crossover as in where the frequency is at like 2000 hertz 2300 hertz wherever if you get if you get that really solid crossover frequency you get you get weight but you also get detail and crunch and me a metallic noise okay it was veiled it still sounded fine it sounded good it had just doesn't sound as good as other speakers Highway to Hell, very similar guitar comes in. It's a little bit lower in the frequency range, and that was very clear. Okay? Parachutes uh, by Coldplay. Um, when uh, they are moving, they, him, it, is moving its fingers across the strings. You, you've ever, everyone's heard this as a kind of a, you, you just feel the, I don't know, the friction of the fingers over the guitar strings. It's not as, as clear as I've heard it on other speakers. Okay, doesn't mean it's bad. Quite frankly, I enjoyed these speakers. Very nice, very enjoyable experience. But Adele's voice on Hello was not as clear as I've heard it on other speakers. It's good. Just not as clear. Let's talk about treble. The same kind of theme about lack of clarity comes into uh, the treble as well. This treble is what some people call rolled off. And what that means is if you have a frequency response, um, a lot of people want a straight line. I don't necessarily agree with that. Even if you have a straight line on one speaker as it measures compared to another speaker that measures flat, they sound completely different. Okay? Measurements are important. But don't base your decision on buying a speaker whether or not it measures the same. Actually, a very good uh, podcast with John Darko and uh, the um, designer of the latest Wharfdale Diamond 12 series. They talked about measurements. And... The designer, it's Heinz something, I don't know what his name is. Maybe I'll link that in the description. Anyway, the designer of that speaker basically said, listen, you can have, you can measure, you can have a measurement of a speaker, it can be the exact same measurement and you can still hear a difference. Like the subtle changes that they make don't even register on the measurements, but guess what? You can hear it. So my point is, just because a speaker measures well doesn't mean it's going to sound well. Also, on amps, you can do feedback loops to get distortion down to almost inaudible levels. And they don't sound good. You want some distortion in there. It livens it up. It thickens it up. It makes it, makes it better. Okay, so measurements, are, I guess, are kind of important. But I'm going to get off my little rant there. Anyway. What are we talking about? The highs. Okay. Um, it's, it's rolled off. So the, at the same level of power, the tweeter is not going to be as loud as the woofer. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people really like that. This would be a, um, a warmer speaker. Okay. So it's, the treble's there, it's just, it's 
it's a little rolled off and it's not as detailed as some other speakers and there's still speakers that are rolled off and they still maintain really good clarity on the top end I just didn't see that or hear it really obviously I couldn't see it it's still pleasant still pleasant symbols on so what by Miles Davis off of kind of blue record present uh, their decay though just didn't sound as accurate as I've heard on other speakers other speakers sounds like the symbols in the room this one sound like the symbols was coming from a speaker and not even the best speaker that I've heard it come from anyway sorry Cambridge okay uh, what are my final thoughts Final thoughts is that this is a uh, south and neutral speaker, warmer speaker, uh, with good bass. And uh, you could listen to the speaker all day and not get listening fatigue or not, you know, your eardrums won't start to hurt because of the treble. I think there's better options than this speaker. While it's good, it's very enjoyable, and I was really enjoying my experience when I wasn't just like critically listening to it. I just had it on in the background. It can move some air too. Six and a half inch woofer. Um, it can fill up a room with sound. I just think there's some better options out there at the same price or lower. The Kef Q150, I think has a, si a similar sound signature with much greater detail. It's a five inch woofer, five and a quarter inch woofer. It's the same price though. Um, I think the original ELAC debut B6, similar sound signature, better sound staging, better clarity, $230 right now, if it's still available. Q Acoustics uh, 3020, not the 3020i, um, is going to be an alternative to its sound. It's going to be a much more uh, detailed sound. Uh, it's detailed, but it's also, it's a different signature, right? So this is a warmer speaker. The cues are neutral, if not leaning towards um, a little bit more exciting speaker. Okay? So the biggest problem with this speaker is its price. And that the, the Kef Q150 exists. Um, the original ELAC debut B6 exists. Um, Kef is the same price. ELAC is $70 cheaper and does things better sound stages like a maniac imaging is better mid-range and top end clarity is better this is still a fine sounding speaker at 299 i wouldn't recommend it just simply because there's some other speakers out there that are better and cheaper better and cheaper it's a fine speaker i like it it looks good it sounds good it just doesn't sound as good as some of the other ones so if you like this video please subscribe we are gaining a lot of subscribers i appreciate it um it's been awesome it's so much fun to do this um, so if you like the video like it if you want to subscribe please subscribe and uh maybe check out some of my other videos so with that i am randy and i'm the cheap audio man